Hi everyone. I hope your quarantine's going well. I hope you're staying inside. Um, I'm here on my couch because I'm working from home. And you know, I had not been very active on my YouTube channel for a while. And there's a couple things that have happened in my life and I will share those with you soon. But I have all of these old videos. You've seen this one, the first part, but you haven't seen the second part of it. And I decided to put them all together in a series of old adventures of Natasha. So enjoy. <laughs> call from Sasha very early in the morning and she's like hey I know how we can go to Scotland together visit Scotland which is the tourism bureau of the country of Scotland invited Sasha and I to go on an outlander themed trip I have never been outside the country before aside from like Mexico and Canada which I've either taken a boat to or I've driven up into so this was all super exciting for me I had to get a passport I had to buy like hiking boots and rain boots because I was not prepared for winter but it actually was a really great time to go because the weather was absolutely perfect. I just have to say thank you to Visit Scotland for sponsoring us and for sending us on the most amazing trip that I've ever been on. I have so many great memories from this trip and just bonding time with Sasha. So our trip was in mid-September. So this video is a little bit late. Every hour, every minute was scheduled for us. We didn't have to do any of the planning, which I was super grateful for because I'm like, I don't know what to do. I just know I really want to visit like the Outlander places where they film. But first, I had to go to Boston because Sasha and I were going to fly together. <laughs> We're here at the airport. We're about ready to board our flight to Dublin, then to Scotland. This is my third time in Scotland. Oh my gosh. She's gonna show me the ropes. I'm so excited. I'm gonna show her everything, especially the many pills. Oh, I'm excited for my favorite aspect of it. How many years did it take uh, you to get me here? How many years? Three. I remember like three years ago, I was like, we need to go to Scotland together once we like started getting to Outlander. My first international flight, it was kind of like an overnight flight because we were going to arrive in Scotland at like 8 a.m. So I'm like, okay, I'm prepared to sleep. We're on the plane. It's still boarding. Dublin for a connection. I slept on the flight, kind of. Sasha, did you sleep? No. That was a no. And it's five o'clock in the morning here. Yay. Until we meet again in Dublin. Scotland. We didn't really have anything planned. We just had the day free to tour and to see all the sights in Edinburgh. We made it! We're here in Scotland! I'm so happy! Yay! I'm chasing out. I'm still trying to get over the fact that I'm like in a different country, like not in the United States. Well, I was like, you're like your bestest friend ever. <laughs> the buildings are all so cool and everything is like cobblestone. Even the roads are stone. All the cars sound weird when they run by. off the plane I was just so astounded at how old everything is because in America especially in California we don't have a lot of old stuff it's all new there's bag piper there's a bag piper you're gonna walk into the street I'm not gonna walk into the street <laughs> Our 
stop, didn't have anything to do with Outlander. We went to all the Harry Potter places. It's the birthplace of Harry Potter. Oh. And you thought this was an Outlander video. Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. It's 1995. Hi. I just realized you're wearing a Gryffindor scarf at an elephant house. I know, it was not planned. Actually, it kind of was, but wasn't. JK Rowling is, is behind her. Rolling. Whatever. She's correcting about everything I say. She's over here with red hair, like Sasha. This is my cappuccino. Ooh. My first meal here in Scotland. This bacon looks a little weird, but everything else looks pretty good. I love haggis. Okay, what is haggis? Great question. It's bacon and sheep stomach. Ew. Alright, I'll try it at some point. Okay, Tasha's trying haggis right now. I'm scared. It's not bad. We came to the cemetery where J.K. Rowling had inspiration for Voldemort, Tom Riddle, and Sasha knows exactly where it is, right? Yep, I, because I searched for it for like 30 minutes. <laughs> There's no signs that lead to it. This is supposed to be an Outlander tour trip. Look at all of these headstones. It does look a little bit like the Haunted Mansion. But they're actually haunted and they're not a uh, Disney thingy. Okay, well, you know, all I know is Disney, so I have to relate it to something well, that I know. I know it. Where is Tom Riddle? Sasha, you said you knew where it was. But then I guess it just, it, it, everything turns around in the cemetery. Whoa, it's look at this one. It's like the staircase in Harry Potter. It changes every single day. <laughs> this is Great. creepy AF. I think we're coming up to it. It's starting to rain now. Great. Oh, I think it's right there. Everyone's yeah. taking pictures. There it is. Thomas Riddle, Esquire. Ooh. Also, Thomas Riddle, his son, captain of the 14th Regiment who died at Trinidad in the West Indies. And now it's going to be pouring soon. Great. <laughs> We stumbled upon Sasha. We stumbled upon a vintage clothing shop, and I'm so happy. They have like all of these like plaid skirts. Eight pounds. Eight pounds. Oh, this says this was on it. It's so ugly, but I'll buy it. <laughs> oh, it's. I awful. think it's actually kind of okay. No. It's a like tablecloth. <laughs> so UK. So UK. Eating it. What? So far, there are lots of steps in Edinburgh. It's quite the multi-layered city. I'm not used to this. <laughs> up, 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 up the stairs we go. Ooh. Here we have Sasha Osberg taking a nap in front of Edinburgh Castle. This is where she truly lies. I'm so happy. Every night she flies away from her body and sleeps here. That's okay. <laughs> but look at this view. I could actually sleep here, I think. <sighs> Except it's gonna be raining soon. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Drop the camera. <laughs> Whenever you use your British accent, I feel like you're like are acting like Christine. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Hello. We also did a last minute meetup, so thank you to everyone who came. I don't think I got any footage from it. It was a lot of fun. We we're standing outside in the rain. What Scotland prepared me for is being wet. <laughs> everyone. Good morning Mrs. Polis. Oh thanks. <laughs> we're here in Scotland on our second day and we're going on an Outlander tour. So it's a tour bus we're going to different locations. Thank you Visit Scotland. I'm so excited. This is going to be so much fun. I'm really excited. make some friends on the tour. I know that'll be really fun. Yeah. I'm lots of friends particularly male and in the kilt. <laughs> we got to go on the Timberbush Outlander tour. I thought it was gonna be like this huge bus. I had seen huge buses already from the previous day. No, it was actually kind of a very intimate tour. Our tour guide was great. He had so many insights on a lot of Scottish history. He also played all of the Outlander music on the bus. We're here at Lollybrock, Hopeton House, and this is somewhat of a ruin. So we're under the arch. This is where Jamie was flogged. <laughs> right here. There's still glass on the windows over here. And obviously they, they use that door. I'm gonna go sit on those steps, like Claire. 
Jamie, Jamie, are you here? Jamie, Jamie, come back to me. This day was probably my most favorite day just because we were immersed into Outlander. So we are here at Blackness Castle. This is where Fort William is. Black Jack Slayer, this is it back there. It's actually close for filming. They're filming something here, which should be cool. It's either Mary Queen of Scots or Robert the Bruce or something like that. Oh. I've got Gregor here, our tour guide extraordinaire. Hi. What's a fun fact you can share with us about Outlander and locations? I've got more of a juicy fact than a fun fact. Oh, okay. They have officially commissioned up to season six. Oh. Wow. That is quite the spoiler <laughs> there for stars. Thank you, Gregor. No we got to go to Lollybrock. We got to go to like a billion castles in the dungeon where Jamie got Raped. Here we are at Lithgow. This is where they film all like the underground dungeon scenes with Jamie and Blackjack in season one. But it's actually really pretty. General Cumberland, who was head of the English army during the Jacobite Rebellion, came and torched this place. What an asshole. <laughs> it's because the Bonnie Prince Charlie was here for like, what, one day? I mean, it doesn't look like it's torch. It, there's like a bit of ruins like up here. I've never been in a castle before. This is so cool. <laughs> It just looks so cold. This is my room. Okay, I don't know if I actually want to sleep here. Oh my gosh, it is a cell. Tasha, you better be nice and you're also going in there. <laughs> How do we get down? Maybe over here? These doorways are kind of low. I'm scared of hitting them. Is this it? So she come down. The room where it happened. The room where it happened. The room where it happened. up the steps, up the spirally stairs that look so much like a castle. It's so cool. All right, we're going down, going down. Ooh. Almost fell. I'm fine. Peasants, peasants in our courtyard. Get away. Mm. You hear the bells? Can you tell? <laughs> Just ringing. It's so pretty. Are you enjoying the view? I'm enjoying it really a lot. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Here we have the Mary Queen of Scotch. Scotch. Scott. <laughs> That's you. at Calendar House and they filmed one scene here, mainly like a museum. Lallybrock Tea Room is where you will find a two-dimensional cut real life-size cardboard cutout of Jamie. So one at a time ladies. We are in Kuros. Kuros. But this is where Cranesmere Village is in the first season. Hag steps. Oh, me. <laughs> Here we go, the butt workout. Lots of steps, lots of walking. <laughs> Let's beware of the Hobbit. This is Hobbiton. Is it? Is it? The hobbits. Those filthy hobbits. I'm a hobbit. <laughs> this is the square of Cranesmere Village. This is the cross where the kid's ear was nailed. This might be like Garlis's house because it's got that like room up there. We walked up a big hill to see this abbey. <laughs> There's a bug on me. Very pretty. Look at the cemetery. All of these gravestones are like bent back 
or on the ground. Standing stones, standing stones, standing stones. We can't go take a picture uh, near them or touching them, unfortunately. And we can't go see Jamie. <laughs> Thistle necklaces. So we are here at Hopeton House. This is what they use for the Duke of Sandringham's house. And they also film a bunch of scenes from season two from France, which is really interesting. And a lot of the outdoor scenes are filmed here. Oh my gosh. This is insane. So they also filmed the scene where Claire tries to interrupt the dueling between Jamie and Blackjack out here. So this is one of the bed chambers that was used in France. This is actually Mary Hawkins' bedroom. They have pictures right here. This is actually a prop I just overheard. Well, this is where Mary and Claire were, was attacked. So this was filmed the longest day of the year. Wow. So they had to put black sheeting over the top to make it look That's like a lot of black hmm. So this is the black entrance from season two. You're on top of Hopeton House. Oh, look at this view. This whole first full day in Scotland like really immersed us into the culture and we learned so much. We didn't actually eat all day until dinner time and we got to go to this really great restaurant called Contini. It's right in Edinburgh. All right, we're done with our Outlander adventures today. We're at this restaurant called Contini and it's a very fancy Italian restaurant. I was definitely more enthusiastic after the meal because I was very tired when I first sat down to eat. Donuts. Sasha got a jiggly pudding. It's flan, but it's not flan. I know. Here, but it's like it's flan. <laughs> I'm not a fan of puddings and stuff, so I won't. This meal was probably one of my favorites of the whole trip. I didn't really vlog or capture any of Sasha and our downtime. Sasha and I bonded so much over this trip, and I'm just happy that our relationship survived. Because <laughs> it is a test. If you go on vacation with somebody, it's a test to see if you can make it. And Sasha and I definitely got stronger through this. Plus, we got to enjoy our favorite thing together, which is out. Day three on our Scotland trip. Train time. We took a train from Edinburgh to Inverurie. See, now you have to say it with a Scottish accent or else it sounds like Inverurie. <laughs> sounds like you're from the Midwest or something. We've taken a train all the way to In Inverurie. Inverurie. <laughs> But in Varuri, see, I can say it really well. So while our first full day, we did like a whole Outlander tour. The trip was Outlander inspired. Not every day did we visit, you know, a set that Outlander filmed on. No, we visited actual historical places. And first historical place that we visited was Castle Fraser. <laughs> We're here at Castle Fraser. I'm so Fraser. excited. This is a real castle from the clan of Fraser. How many stories is this? About seven. <laughs> oh my gosh. All of them are open to the public. <laughs> uh, all of them bar one because it's um, attic space. We don't use it, but we think it would have been servant quarters, but there are bats in there now, so we can't get <laughs> it. 
Okay, so I just noticed this crest on the castle and it says Eliza Fraser. Eliza Fraser was the lady laird here at the castle. When her brother died, she inherited the castle. So she was the only she was the only lady laird that we had. Are there many lady lairds? Not very many. Mm. Um, not that I know of. Eliza, she was she was a force to be reckoned with. Wow, <laughs> I love it. You I could have that. your wedding here. That is awesome. How many people can actually like fit in the wedding? Like um, do the wedding? You can fit about s between 70 and 100 upstairs in the Great Hall. Oh, wow. Okay, let's get married here, Sasha. <laughs> if you don't find a husband that wants to do it here, I will marry you, okay? <laughs> I will find a husband if I, we can have a polygamous thing, you know? <laughs> I thought it was just gonna be like a big, you know, fangirl week, but we actually learned a lot of history, like a lot of history. There were so many people teaching us new things and educating us on the Fraser family, specifically on this day. So in 1812, he lost his leg. In 1814, he inherited this estate from his aunt, Eliza Fraser. This was a Mackenzie family metal container. It was a spittoon. Oh, for chewing because tobacco? Because of pipe smoke was not invited. And the trips, in, and it's, it's not too bad because you just put your foot up, but you're coming downstairs. Ah. And you like don't this, see it. And you put your foot out and expect to find a step about here. Yep. And you just go right forward. And, and then you go tumble down. down. At the other end of the castle, there's all sorts of spy holes and secret rooms to observe who was coming in. So much history. What are you doing? Hello. <laughs> what is Spying that? on the people in the Great Hall. <laughs> The walls and the ceiling has gone from it and at Michael Fraser, which is Dragons. Dracarys! After a private tour of Castle Fraser, we got to stay in my most favorite accommodation of the entire trip, probably of my entire life, the Meldrum House. <laughs> Let's do a little tour. This is, I'm sure, is a closet. Ooh, there's only one robe in here. Sasha? <laughs> and then we have the bedroom. There's a desk. And then there's this incredible view. Ah! <laughs> Sasha! It's me! <laughs> right before she did that, I just said, these curtains are so like poofy. I just wanted to make sure that no one was behind them. We've got a whole golf course around here. So cool. You know cool. what's the best view of all, though? What, you? You. Oh, Dang, you took my line. I'm sorry. We also have some chocolates. Oh my gosh, and this TV, by the way, it comes up from this dresser. We have yet to be able to watch a new episode of Outlanders. Maybe they have an episode on, on demand. demand. season one here. The computer knows that we're in the UK. It won't let us watch it. How are we supposed to do an Outlander trip to Scotland without watching Outlanders? Let's go for an evening walk. Oh yes, an evening walk. I know, just look at this pack right <gasps> here, or that little thing, what? See, this place is an affordable luxury. I think that there's maybe some like really nice Scotsman here. Mm. We should find our husbands. We should. Meldrum House was beautiful. It was a 1200 century home converted into a hotel. So we got to stay in the new wing. Our room was very modern, but they also had some of the Laird's rooms converted. Sasha and I had the most fun together, I feel, at the Meldrum House because it was very secluded, very in the countryside. We got to have dinner at the hotel. So it was very easy for me to, you know, have some of the drink and then just go back to the Hotel. Thanks, Sasha, for helping me finish that bottle of wine. Not. Look, it's a perfect sphere of ice cream. Fourth day in Scotland. Okay, day. What is that? 
thing. There's a robot on the lawn. It picks up um, balls. the golf balls. Our plans had unfortunately changed today because we were supposed to be paired with a Scottish native, but unfortunately she had a bit of a family emergency. So instead, we are going to a Scottish distillery, hopefully a castle. If not, we're going to tour the Meldrum house. Look, there's cows. Cool. Moo. Moo. Moo, moo, bitch. <laughs> buildings are so big like family homes like yes you usually are pretty rich to have one of these but they were so much easier to build houses like this big way back when when they didn't have amenities like air conditioning heating or electricity plumbing that plumbing that's what makes these places so expensive nowadays before then it's just pretty much like building a fort just a very large fort i keep seeing these hills like this remembering princess bride rolling down the hill can you roll down the hill for me no <laughs> Come on, it'd be funny. Who's inside? <gasps> it's open? What can we do in here? Hello? Hello? Oh. It's like a little mini room. Sing me a song of the last that is gone. Sink the last be I. That's our room over there. That's the house. Here we are with the Highland cows. We're trying to get them to come over to us. Moo! Yeah, see, he's just eating. <gasps> Hi! Nope. Come on, look up. This is harder getting the attention of a cow than it is seeing Sam Hewen. Seriously. <laughs> it's so green. Oh my gosh, my camera is even picking it up. You ate that last night. I did. I did eat that. I feel a little bad. Like I said, our day was a bit derailed. We were supposed to meet up with our Scotland native. Instead, we toured Glengarry. Now, Glengarry doesn't actually look like the way you pronounce it. That's just a Gaelic thing, I guess. We couldn't really film inside the distillery, but it was very interesting. Lots of smells of alcohol, and we tasted the alcohol. Chap, we go, heel for heel and toe for toe. Arm and arm and arm we go, all for Murray's wedding. Over hill ways up and down. I tasted it like a pro. Do we all remember when I first tasted scotch? Horrible. Look at me now. We have little whiskey hot chocolates that we can drink tonight. Wait, are they actually whiskey in there? No, you can put it in it. Oh my god, I was gonna be like, uh, not having that. I am. Every night I've been a little bit tipsy. So why not? You know, when on vacation, just- I'm doing homework. Fifth day. Bye, Mildrum House. Okay. Train time to Inverness. Inverness, you remember? That's where Loch Ness is. We didn't go to Loch Ness. We were there for one day and it was a very hectic day. The first thing we did was we went to the battlefield of Culloden. We just got an in-depth tour and talking to you about the battlefield, lots of interesting information. This is a real place. This is where real people died. So we were going to be as respectful as we can. They do have a grave site, which is a mass grave site. There was 1,500 men who died out here on the battlefield. There is a Glenn Fraser marking stone. But as we know, Jimmy Fraser is fictional, but Glenn Fraser is not. Very real. Very real. There's 400 men in Glen Fraser. So right now we are on the lines where the British fought. Down over there, there's blue flags to represent where the Scottish fought. And it looked like in the presentation that the British kind of like stayed in one place and then the Scottish clans and everyone ran in. And the battle only lasted what, an hour. Love said to me, my mother won't mind. So these gravestones that were put here in the 1800 were put in commemoration of the men who fought and died. Only 50 British soldiers actually died on the battlefield. Look, there's actual mounds. Do you see this? We have a good 
jolt, like a heart jolt. And she moves through the fair And fondly I watched her Go here and go there And she went her way One thing I wanted to illustrate, this wasn't really a black and white battle. There were Scottish people fighting on the English side and English people fighting for the Jacobites. It was a civil war. So it was a civil war and wanting certain a certain king on the throne and a religious war as well. After the battlefield, we were meant to go to the Clavicairns, but we spent so much time on the battlefield and learning. We didn't have time because we had to meet our native Scot, Claire McKay, who worked on the side of Outlander as the herbologist. The Clavicairns was kind of where Diana got her inspiration for some of the story. It's only like a 10 minute drive, so if you go to the battlefield of Clawden, go to the Clavicairns. We made it to our hotel. We've been lugging our luggage everywhere. I packed a 50 pound bag. No, we how? how Grateful are you that I didn't tell you, to, I told you not to bring big pink. I know, I'm very grateful. But some kind man carried up my the luggage the last flight of steps for me. That was nice, there, that was nice. Yeah, there was chivalry right there. Yeah, there was three flights of steps there that we had. Four. four flights of steps that we had to walk up. <laughs> Europe for ya. We are in this beautiful place with this beautiful scenery. And we are gonna go walk to the botanical gardens now to go do some Claire Fraser stuff. So far, I really like Inverness. It's very beautiful. We're walking into a quite picturesque area. Beautiful river, trees, such a wave. <laughs> We're lost. We're lost. This is some sort of activity center. I think it might be just around the river bend. Welcome to the Inverness Botanic Gardens. I'm Claire Mackay, the Outlander Herbalist. I worked on the first series of Outlander as the Herbal Consultant, and after that I wrote a chapter on the history of Herbius in the Highlands for Diana's Outlandish Companion. Oh! Um, yeah, so I was in that. And I decided to write Outlander Herbal, which will be out soon. I take a little tour of the, the tropical house. The yeah. tropical house of the botanical gardens, right? Yeah, this is the tropical house. Yep. Gonna have one of these. These are uh, cherry guava. Yeah, they're so tasty. So guava. the guava, yeah, these are cherry guava. The guava is mm. steeped in folklore and set in all different continents. In South America, they use the leaves mm -hmm. for um, digestive mm -hmm. upset, tummy upset, headaches. So this is mm -hmm. her. Mm -hmm. I see this a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, you'd be like, yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's a Scotch thistle. It's a real McCoy, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> All thistles have an effect on the, the liver. Mm -hmm. So, wow. you know, like milk thistle? I don't know if you've heard about milk mm -hmm. thistle. That's no. one of our natives. But the milk thistle regenerates liver cells. It's most common uses for hangovers in this country. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> Like I'm not in Scotland anymore. <laughs> the Highlanders had such a love of heather. They drank it every day because they believed it was good for their health. Is that true? Yeah. St John's wort has actually been shown to be as effective and sometimes better in clinical trials than Prozac as an antidepressant. Oh wow. This is in fact an antidepressant. Wow. But they knew that in the 5th century or St Columba cool. did 
somehow Mrs. Fitz says to pick it at a full moon. So Mrs. Oh, Fitz in the first Outlander yeah. series, um, when she was using it for to stop the bleeding, so that's one of the uses for it. She puts it in vinegar to stop the bleeding in Jamie's mouth when he's been beaten up for a mm -hmm. movie. We finally met up with Claire and she was so lovely, so wonderful. I'm so happy to have met her. We had such a good time. She taught us how to make a salve and the salve that they actually use in the books. lavender flowers as well, just a pinch. I love lavender, it's so soothing and calming and obviously Jamie has been scarred by the memory of <laughs> lavender. <laughs> so I almost forgot. Really okay. Facebook friends and she's so wonderful I can't wait to go back <laughs> Scotland we took a train like a three-hour train back to Edinburgh from Inverness we did like a full-on circle basically it is our last day here in Scotland we are leaving this very pretty hotel room today uh, we are taking a five-hour train ride all the way back to Edinburgh you ready Sasha <laughs> we've enjoyed our time so much <laughs> And this day was all about the Bonnie Prince Charlie. They had an exhibit at the Scotland National Museum. It's not there anymore. Again, we discussed the Bonnie Prince Charlie. We learned a lot of history about him, his family, where he came from, his motives. We made it to our hotel. Woo! We're in a little elevator. No, oh, I accidentally pressed one. Oh, you're like a little child. <laughs> Ugh. Pressing Stop all the it, buttons. Mom. Don't Stop. press all the buttons. So we're back in Edinburgh. We are walking to the National Museum of Scotland yes, to get the Jacobite exhibit tour. Just came upon the Edinburgh Castle. And it's sunny out, so you can see it better. Here we go. And to the National Museum of Scotland for the Jacobite experience. The 175 Jacobite Rebellion was a turning point in British history. Believing the British throne to be his birthright, Charles Edward Stuart, or Bonnie Prince Charlie, planned to invade Great Britain along with his Jacobite followers and remove the Hanoverian usurper George II. In June 1745, Charles Edward Stuart had one key aim, regaining the throne his father, the Roman Catholic convert James VII of Scotland and II of England and Ireland, had lost in 1688 to his nephew and son-in-law, William of Orange. This glorious revolution had confirmed a Protestant succession in a predominantly Protestant Great Britain, which from 1714 was embodied in the Hanoverian dynasty. His audacious or reckless plan was to gain a foothold in the Western Highlands, meet up with the French invasion force at London, and remove the Hanoverian usurper. This tea set they actually used in season two, if you guys remember. Not that actual one, because that's, you know, history. Mm -hmm. 
And with luck and the element of surprise on his side, for a time it proved almost as straightforward as that. As we know, after the disastrous 40-minute defeat at Culloden Moor, Charles was forced to spend the next five months as a hunted man. It is not completely clear how Charles spent these months, although it appears he disguised himself as a Mr. Sinclair, a shipwrecked merchant, and later on as a lady. Betty Burke. Eventually, Charles was rescued from Scotland by his brother and shipped back to France, who, although they were still not prepared to support Charles' bid for the throne, agreed to protect him. We are here at the Gardener's College for dinner tonight. It's that little bungalow over there. Sasha and I just had some real fun shopping about. We got some good things, some goodies. Let's go have a nice last meal here in Scotland, Sasha. Shut up, it's not the last meal. I'm staying here forever. Well, where am I gonna stay when I get to Boston? You can take my room, it's fine. <laughs> Just bring my dog. <laughs> okay. Her eyes, they shone like the diamonds. You'd think she was... We're saying goodbye to Scotland. No, we're not. We're saying see you, see you later. See you later, Scotland. See you later, Scotland. I love you so much. With a black velvet band. That's the end of my Scotland trip. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I would love to do more videos like this, even though, you know, it's rather expensive to do it on my own dime, and I was very fortunate enough to have Visit Scotland take us on this trip. If you guys want to do a trip like this, I would do two weeks, not one week. I mean, you have to get yourself out there, so it's worth it to do two weeks, but we still got a lot of stuff done. We still enjoyed ourselves immensely. We had a wonderful time, and I'm so grateful for that opportunity. The people of Scotland were great. It was definitely some of the best memories I have from my early 20s, probably. Hopefully I get to go back, but it was my first trip, so I'll remember it for a lifetime. Thank you to Sasha for being my travel buddy and for inviting me on this trip. I love you, and I can't wait to come and see you again. Thank you all for watching. I'm Natasha. I'll see you all in a new video. Keep calm and fangirl on. Bye!